Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining our diagnostic training session today. And what you're about to see is a pre-recorded training session we did over in the United States. Uh, but be assured that the a lot of the material that we cover is really applicable to any automotive applications. So uh, just be aware that, it, it, yes, it, it is a lot of North American vehicles, but they will apply a lot of the same principles apply over in the UK as well. Now, if you do have any questions, if you're watching this during the premiere, you can just uh, leave it in the chat. We'll be monitoring live chat. If you're watching this after the premiere, then just feel free to leave a comment underneath the video and we'll get to those as we can as well. So my name is Jason Gabrinas. I'm one of Snap-on's diagnostic technical trainers. I've been in the training department since 2013, traveling around North America, helping techs and shop owners get the most out of their diagnostic equipment. Before I did that, it was a couple of years as a diagnostic sales rep at Snap-on, so I had 30 different franchisees I worked with, as well as the shops that they serviced in order to help everyone get the most out of their diagnostic needs. Then before I did that, it was eight years at Subaru, so I worked in a dealership, and over time, I guess, just became the default dyad guy in the shop. So I always ended up having the drivability problems, the intermittent problems, the weird wiring problems that would show up on those cars. And that's really where I cut my diagnostic teeth, was trying to figure out all those weird head scratcher type cars that would come into my mind. Then before that, a bunch of other miscellaneous wrenching jobs, been a little over 25 years under hood experience for me. So our topic today is fast track intelligent diagnostics to speed up your workflow. So uh, I'm going to walk through a few things about fast track intelligent diagnostics, snap on exclusive function. I know I, I oftentimes talk about different things that can be used on multiple scan tools. It doesn't really matter what you have for a scan tool. Um, oftentimes the same concepts can be used. But this time we are going to focus on, like I said, snap ons exclusive fast track intelligent diagnostics software. Um, so, uh, we're going to talk about what it is, what it isn't. We'll walk through a few different, uh, scenarios with it and, uh, which we'll hopefully you can get a better knowledge and understanding of, of what all is. So I always like to talk about having a good repeatable diagnostic work. I, if I have the steps laid out in front of me, I can easily repeat it. And then I don't skip any steps. I don't miss anything when it comes to a diagnosis. So. Really, when it starts with a diagnosis with a check engine light or drivability problem, so to say, uh, pre-scan. It's going to check all your systems for code, of course. We want to see if there are any codes in there. And then we need to go through a diagnosis. That's where we're going to focus most of our time for this presentation is under that diagnosis portion. Uh, so we can actually determine the cause, see what's wrong with the vehicle. Then we get to repair. So once we've figured out what's wrong with the vehicle, then, of course, we'll fix the problem, whatever we need to do hang apart or, or clean something or whatever, or adjust something we need to do. Whatever it is, we're going to actually do the repair. And then we'll go to recalibrate, reset, relearn after the fact. Oftentimes you do need to do some sort of a reset or a relearn or a calibration on a part. And then, of course, we want to road test to verify and then do a post scan to just make sure there aren't any codes left. So when it comes to intelligent diagnostics, uh, that all is driven off a code. So if I have a code, I can then go in and, and access this. But what if I don't have that? Uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to gather uh, in order to make my diagnosis? So if codes are found, I do need to determine an action plan. I need to gather that information. Maybe it's TSBs, right? Uh, it's definitely the best first step to check TSBs on any situation on a vehicle because that technical bulletin might be the thing that you need to fix the car. And if that's the first thing you check, then I guess you're done, right? So once you get through that diagnosis, say, oh yeah, that's exactly what that is. And then you can walk through it in a very quick diagnosis that way. Uh, otherwise, I also need OEM info. So maybe I need a flow chart. Maybe I need some specifications, wiring diagrams, what have you. Also real world repair info. What have other technicians done in this particular case with this vehicle, with this code? What was done to fix it? Data stream would we'll probably be reading PID data if we're trying to diagnose a drivability problem or an engine light or something. Uh, so I need to know what PIDs to look at and things of that nature. Functional tests, which of the functional tests, resets, relearns, calibrations might I need to use in order to, 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 to diagnose this and solve this problem? And then of course, component testing as well. So I might need to test that component to verify the failure and then verify the repair after. 
So let's go through each one of these individually. So first one's TSBs, right? So how many TSBs could there be for a vehicle? These are all going to be rhetorical questions. Just kind of answer them on your own in your head. So how many TSBs could there be for a vehicle? Could it be hundreds? Could it be a thousand? I guess it depends on how, how uh, broken the vehicle is after it leaves the factory. Uh, how long would it take to look up the TSBs related to the code? All of the TSBs for the code, depending on what you use for uh, repair information, it might take a little while. And then are you sure you found all the TSBs that are related? Because it might not necessarily be a code. It could be a, a, a drivability problem. And then are you sure you have the latest TSB information? Now, if you get your TSBs from, say, Shopkey or Mitchell, uh, we get them in faster than anybody else. So we get them instantly, pretty much. As soon as the manufacturer sends them out, they're all digital anyway, so that goes out. And then um, within two to eight weeks, it's available to you to use, depending on where we are in our update process. So it's anywhere from two to eight weeks. Other places, it can be as little as six months or more uh, to get a, get a hold of these. OEM information. So what OEM info do I need? Do I need a diagnostic flow chart? Do I need wiring diagrams? Do I need specifications like torque specs and things of that nature? Do I need removal and installation procedures, labor times? How long is that going to take to gather and get all this information together? Depends on what you're using, of course, for diagnostic information or OEM information. How long is that going to take? And do you need to log into another computer to get to it? Do I need to walk halfway across the shop or to the office or whatever and log into another computer in order to do that? How about real world repair information? Do you have access to real world repair information that's based on billions of successful repairs? Depending on what you use for information, maybe you do, maybe you don't. If not, how do you find out what other techs have done in this case? So uh, maybe you use may, perhaps an other information service. There are other things out there. Uh, and then, or phone a friend, right? call your buddy down the street at the dealership. Hey, whenever you've seen this problem, have you ever seen this problem? And if you have seen this problem, what fixed it? What'd you end up doing in that case? What should I check? All right, sometimes that can take a lot of time. Maybe they don't answer the phone right away, things like that. And then how long will it take you to find this information specific to the code? Is it gonna show up right on the tool or are you gonna have to search for it? And then we get to data streams. So how many data PIDs can there be on a vehicle? It could be hundreds, if not thousands there again. And do you know which PIDs you need to look at for this specific code in this specific situation. Do you know which PIDs are irrelevant for the code? What do I not care about? What do I wanna filter out? For example, if I'm looking at say a misfire problem, do I need to know what the left window switch is doing? Probably not, unless the wiring on that car is really messed up, uh, but more than likely not. And then do you know what the known good min and max values are for that PID? What, what are the, what's the range? for that PID. Not every manufacturer will, will give that to you in that case. How many functional tests, special functions, resets, and relearns are available for a vehicle? Could be dozens, hundreds perhaps, depends on the vehicle and how sophisticated it is. Do you know which tests on the vehicle apply to that vehicle and code? Of course it applies to the vehicle, but does it apply to that specific code and specific problem that you're dealing with? And then component testing. How many component tests are available for the vehicle? Could be hundreds, if not thousands again. Do you know which test to perform for the code in question? What component do I need to look at and what test do I need to do in order to solve that problem? Do you have access to information based on how to hook up, where to hook up, and what good looks like? Do you have any of that information? So that brings us to how Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostic is going to help us. So what is Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostics anyway? So Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostics, quite simply, it links problems to solutions, enabling the technician to complete the repair quickly and confidently. In short, it's everything you need and nothing you don't. It gets rid of the noise and just lets us focus on what's important. And how does it do that? Well, it does it by providing us sure track information, which is our experience-based information, real fixes, filtered TSBs, smart data, specific functional tests, specialized resets, guided component testing, and customized test meters only for the vehicle you're working on, only related to the problem being solved, all on one screen. It is vehicle, year, make, model, engine, and code specific for that problem. So how is that different than what other companies may have out there? As I said, this is exclusive to Snap-on, how we do this. 
So it uses a big, big, big amounts of data. So we have 2.65 billion repair events that we can access to see what was done before, what was done in the past. 356 billion data points. So that's, you know, what data PIDs am I working on? The broadest vehicle and sensor connectivity on the market. So that is due to the guided component test. There's over 7 million guided component tests available in the tool. And the most comprehensive OEM technical library due to Mitchell and Shopkey being there. So uh, we, as Snap-on, are the only ones with this vast an amount of information. There's others out there that say they may have it, but it is truly exclusive to snap on all the symptoms. So let's see how this is going to help you when it comes to time to uh, diagnose a vehicle. So left-hand side is going to be the vehicle as a whole. And then the right-hand side is going to be what we would filter down to through this funnel. I just call intelligent diagnostics a really great filter. It's going to filter it down to just what I need. So on the right-hand side is what the filters. So on either side, of course, it's going to have 28 control units because that doesn't change. So we have 28 control modules on the vehicle, no matter what. How many, ooh, how many codes are possible? 2,470 on the vehicle. In this case, we only work at one code at a time in Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostics. So we only need to deal with one. TSB's recalls and campaigns, there's 654 different articles for this vehicle. We only have one for this particular example. It's a misfire. 2,361 data PIDs available on the vehicle brings us down to 11. Functional test resets and relearns, 482 available down to six. Component tests, 395 tests down to 10. And then sure track real fix tips. That's more of that experience-based information. 1,228 available for the vehicle brings us down to two because that's all we need. Gets rid of all the noise and lets you focus on exactly what you're trying to do. So let's go live and look at a couple different cars and how we would function through this and how it's going to work. All right. So let me pull up this car out of history here. So we got a, first, we have a 2012 BMW. And we access this, of course, through the scanner. Oh, now I didn't mention before, uh, in order to access this, of course, you would need a um, scan tool. Apollo, Triton, Zeus, any flavor of those. Apollo, Triton, or Zeus. You also need an active software subscription. And then if you're in North America, you also have the option of a prepaid data plan as well. Um, so that's what you would need to have all of that active and Wi-Fi, of course, because it pulls it down over Wi-Fi. Uh, so you would need to have all of that active at the time, and then you're able to pull this information. Down. So let's go into our scanner. And of course, as I said, the very first thing we need to do is we need to do a code scan on the vehicle. So we want to check it for codes and see what's going on. So we're going to do a pre-scan, scan through, see how many modules. All right, so you got 52 modules on this vehicle. And uh, cylinder 3 misfire, PO303. So we'll hit uh, diagnose here. And that's where the magic happens. You see all those spinning wheels? That was pulling the information down from the internet uh, to filter out anything we needed on the vehicle. So the first thing I like to talk about, and we don't talk about this a lot, and I think we should. Uh, so this is a list of codes on this vehicle. So in this case, we only had one. But if I had 20 codes on this vehicle, it would list them all. And then I can just switch back and forth just from this little menu up here. Instead of having to go back, find it, go back and forth, I can just see it in the list. So that's very helpful. The other thing this does for us is it gives us a repeatable diagnostic workflow. So if I read through all this, top to bottom, left to right, just like a book, and touch on all these things, it's going to walk me through a complete diagnostic workflow that is, like I said, repeatable. So that helps me not skip any steps. So as we said, the very first thing we want to do anytime we get a car in is we want to, or anytime we have a problem, we want to check TSBs. So there's TSBs. Engine misfire due to failed ignition coil. Well, that sounds pretty cut and dry, but if we come down here, uh, the current misfire test plan for these engines can be lengthy to complete and does not provide an effective method to diagnose a faulty secondary ignition component. So this is, ISTA is their um, diagnostic tool that they use in BMW and they have what they call test plans on the tool. So when I have a code, it's gonna be kind of something a little along the lines of this, but it gives you a plan, step through, you know, yeses and nos and things. Um, so we come down here and it goes on to say, uh, for vehicles with these engines, uh, which have been in service over two years and 10,000 miles during the first service visit due to ignition coil failure, Replace all Bosch ignition coils with Delphi coils as indicated. Uh, let me see. 
want to make sure. Uh, if any coils are replaced previously with Delphi part, it does not need to be replaced. So what happened was, I think it's up here. Uh, most likely causes the ignition coil has failed, which can be confirmed in many cases with the basis diagnosis. During operation with high temperature fluctuations, the different materials used in the Bosch ignition coil construction can deteriorate over time, leading to a failure. So if we come down here and look, we see this Bosch coil, it's all plastic rubber, right? Over here on the Delphi coils that you want to replace all Bosch coils with Delphi coils, we can see we got metal in there. So that would stand up, it's like a shield. So it's a stand up a lot better to any of those temperature fluctuations we're talking about. Uh, so if you find, now if you didn't, had not read this, if you had not accessed this, you might have a vehicle with Bosch coils in it. And yeah, maybe one had failed. So you pull it out and you replace it with another Bosch coil. Because you might think, well, that's the, that's what we're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to replace like for like. Well, in this case, that would be incorrect. They would want you to replace it with the Delphi. So if you hadn't read this TSB first, this might be the only thing you need to do is just replace the coils and have a nice day. So uh, always important to read those TSBs for sure. Top to bottom, left to right. Next one's going to be my top repairs graph. So you may have seen this before on multiples of our tools. There's many different tools out there that have this information that we that we have. Um, but in this case, it's top repairs. So it gives you this extra little detail here in the front. So number one, of course, is replace the ignition coil. That makes sense, especially with that TSB. Replace the spark plug also makes sense because you're probably gonna do them at the same time if you're already in there. Uh, replace, uh, got a clean throttle body. That's the next one, but notice it's replace, replace, clean. Then this one's reprogrammed, then replaced again, then cleaned again. So it gives you that little extra detail. What did they do to it? Did they replace it? Did they adjust it? Did they clean it? Did they reprogram it? What did they do? That's that real world information. I don't have to phone a friend on. Next one coming down is going to be smart data. So once again, as I said, instead of having all the PIDs on the vehicle shown, it's going to list just the PIDs that are relevant to our problem. Now, in this case, since I'm on, the, uh, on a demonstration mode, uh, we're, we're missing a couple cylinders, but we're going to bring those back in. What I wanted to show you though, is you see, we got one, two, three, four, five, 10, 11 different pits on here. And these are the ones that are deemed most important for when I'm diagnosing a misfire. Now I could still go up here on the custom data list and you'll see it also has multitude of different, uh, data sets or data categories, so to say. Uh, so if I wanted to go to smooth running values and pull up my other two cylinders there, we can do that. Uh, maybe I wanted to go into oxygen sensor and do just check my cat uh, before and after cat voltage. I'd be able to see that. You'll see that there's multiple categories that I can pull from and the tool does it automatically. I don't need to worry about knowing what PIDs I need or knowing you know, where I need to go or how to do a custom list or taking the time to do a custom list. It's already there. It's already set. I don't have to worry about it. I also could go in. In this case, we don't have any min-max values set. There's no flags here. We'll show you some in a minute on a different vehicle. But I could still go in here as well and go into setup. And then I can go in and turn my triggers on individually per PID. Once again, it's going to take a lot of time to do that. I could duplicate this. Everything that the tool does for me, I can duplicate it um, if I want to but it's gonna take a very long amount of time. How long is it gonna take me to look up those TSPs? How long is it gonna take me to figure out how many, what PIDs I need and then what are the min-max values that they need to be at? That's gonna be the longest time I would think amongst all the other stuff we discussed. So this is uh, a huge time saver just in this. Leaves you just to the pertinent information. If there's something else you wanna see, by all means, add it back in, go up to the custom data list. It gives you a good starting point is the point I'm trying to make. Could go back into a smart data list, or I can go into any of the other data lists if I want to see the full list. Back up, go to the next thing. So we have uh, functional tests and resets. So if I go to functional tests and resets, we see throttle valve, injectors. Uh, you can turn the injector on and off and see how it runs. So if I had a misfire on cylinder three, I could go into cylinder three injector, turn it off. If it runs the same, then it could be the injector causing the problem. If it runs worse, then it's probably not the injector because I turned it off and stopped feeding the cylinder. So that's uh, a good way to tell just by from the driver's seat, just turning it on, turn it on. Uh, come down here and go to my guided component test next. 
And then you see maybe accelerator pedal, crank sensor to both cam sensors, compression test, ECM, ignition test, throttle stuff. Uh, so let's go up to ECM. Because that'll give me both my lot module location. So there's uh, talking about how to disassemble it and how to get there even. Or I can go to my pinouts and then it's going to tell me what each pin on each connector does for that PCM. That's helpful information if I need to test anything. Or how about compression test? This one's kind of cool. This one got added a couple years ago. So it's a relative cranking compression test using secondary probe and test leads. So the relative compression test can be checked using the regular supplied test leads, the regular yellow and black test leads that come with the tool, and in a special ignition preset that's been programmed uh, to this test for this engine. So you would go in here, it's going to tell you how to hook it up. Battery positive, no good ground. Optionally, you can hook up cylinder one spark plug to the inductive pickup. And then we can see where cylinder one is there, cylinder one, cylinder one. That way we can see the firing in there. And then all you have to do is hit view meter. It's going to automatically set the voltage, automatically set the time base for you. And then you crank away and then see what's my compression relative to each other. Handy dandy little test. If I want to get to any of the other tests, it's available down here. Let me back up. And we get down to the bottom, we have our sh more sure track information. So this is our experience based information once again. And we can see this is the number one fix. So that's coil number three in this case and the spark plugs. I want additional fixes. Maybe I tried that already and I want to see some other suggestions. A uh, lot of coils, a lot of coils. Uh, coil and spark plug, throttle body. It goes down by count depending on how common it was. It goes all the way down to the ones. PCV ventilation is one of the availabilities. So lots of different things that we can choose from. It's going to vary depending on your make model, how many times it's been fixed, how many different fixes are available. Next one is troubleshooter. So that's going to have, usually it's code set criteria mainly and uh, what to expect when you do get this code. And then lastly, if you're in North America and you have Shopkey or Mitchell, you can click on repair information. What it's going to do is going to log you in. It's going to log the vehicle in for you. You might have to make a couple choices just because I'm in demo mode here. It doesn't, not everything transfers. Come over and then it's going to perform a search for you as well. So I can come over here. Maybe I suspect it's the coil. And then we can see all the different information we need. So here's the OEM test procedure. So we can go through here. And there's your test procedure. Here's what you need to do. Uh, I can go over here. Um, got a component tester in here as well. Component locator, wiring diagrams. If I wanted to go into my wiring diagrams, there's the coils right there. I can go in. I'm going to highlight the wires on the first coils there. If I want to do the other three, I can do that too. Oops, there we go. There's everything, and then I can go here, and I can see all the wires related to the coil. Super simple. Oh, by the way, I'm on a Zeus Plus, and uh, any of the Windows-based tools, in this case, you wouldn't even have to leave the car. You wouldn't have to leave the driver's seat, really. You could just be doing all this stuff right from the front seat, pulling your wiring diagrams, pulling all this information available to you on one screen exactly where you need. All right, so that's a BMW. Let's go look at uh, F1. Oh, let's go look at this Camry first. I'll look at a Toyota Camry with the same problem because I can only really program one code at a time. Go in there, do a pre-scan. Saves the report, go to diagnose. It's going to pull down the information. In this case, I don't have any TSBs that relate to a cylinder three misfire. Is that okay? Is that, a, is that a good thing? Absolutely. Because now I don't have to go and search for TSBs that don't exist. How much time would that save me if I go 10, 15, 20 minutes trying to find TSB that's not even there? Like, oh, there's got to be something. Well, there isn't anything. So in this case, you know, that would save me time right there just from a simple look. Uh, and then top repairs, of course, spark plug coil, the usual suspects, even, even a cylinder head gasket for a misfire. That could be for sure. I used to work at Subaru, remember? So that's pretty common. Uh, let's go to my scanner data, see what we got there. Uh, in this case, we got a lot of these flaps, a lot of these flaps. Now, of course, this is just dummy data, so it's not necessarily, uh, uh, some of it's not logical necessarily like this negative number, but um, we can still see how it works. So we can see this red flag here, short-term fuel trim. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see where the, it was right at the very beginning. 
where the problem was. Uh, same with the knock. Well, you'll notice that there's a dashed line here and a solid red line here. So when that PID triggered, it'll set a red line. And let me just stop. Let me just stop. I think it's going to be right away. Yeah. So we can see the red line where it actually happened and then the dashed line on all the other PIDs that correlates with where the red line. So that's going to give me a good look at cause and effect. So when one went out of parameters, did it affect the other ones? Now also note that smart data should only be used when the vehicle's idling at operating temperature with no loads present. I want to make sure that I am at that, that state uh, in order to do this. Second, you hit that accelerator pedal, all bets are off because all the, you know, all of the different you know, fuel trims and pressures and all the stuff goes away when I, tap the even so much as tap the throttle so we want to have it at a good idle operating temperature no all right and then let's see functional tests same type of thing lean rich compression check fuel cut that's your that's your uh injectors got a component test crank sensor cam sensor ecm the usual suspects there come down the bottom uh fewer counts on the fix it's is probably less of an issue with these vehicles uh, it's a Camry. It's pretty reliable, so I'd imagine. Uh, and then let's see if there's additional real fixes. Yep, fair number of those. And then troubleshooter. Well, in this case, we don't have any troubleshooter for that, and that happened. Uh, and then, of course, my OEM repair information would look pretty much like the BMW would as well. And one more. Let's go with a uh, Chevy Silver. Okay, I'm going to go into scanner once again. Same procedure, workflow, right? Code scan, pre-scan, let it go. All right, there we go. Cylinder three misfire, diagnose. Pulls down the data for me. Six TSBs in this case. Injector replacement guidelines, diagnostic aids, diagnostic tips for misfire, et cetera. Lots of stuff there. And let's check that one randomly. Let's see what that one says. Rough idle, crank, no start, extended crank, engine misfire. Fuel oxidation and volatility concerns can often cause issues. So here's a, a reformulated top engine cleaner has been released by GM as recommended and approved for GM vehicles. So here's some, uh, you know, coked up valves there. A lot more coked up. Wow, that's, that's pretty bad right there. Uh, so we can actually see all of that. And then there's just a lot to clean it. There's all the goop and the gunk. And then here's what it looks like a little bit after. So. Uh, that's just one bit of advice that you could use on that. If I had a problem with a uh, you know, coked up valve for that. Uh, same deal, smart data. It's going to go in there and wait for the misfire count to count up. There we go. So I got misfire on cylinder two. And we can see where the line is. It does automatically save it as well. But we can see that line there. And then all the other ones going to have a dash line. Depending on where it was. Okay. Functional tests, crank variation learn, cam actuator control, uh, fuel pump relay, fuel trim reset might need to be done during that. Uh, ignition timing, a couple of functional tests for that. Guided component test, crank, cam, ECM, ignition tests available for that. And then down the bottom, sure track. This is a uh, way less common problem, apparently. Uh, and then real fixes is going to be a couple there. And then troubleshooter should give us some info, I think. Let's see. No, nope, not in this case either. Uh, and then once again, the repair information, link, right? So as you can see, it's a repeatable, readily repeatable diagnostic workflow that gives us different information based on the vehicle, but it saves a ton of time. It looks up the TSVs for me. It looks up the real world information for me. It knows what PIDs are required for the diagnosis and what the min-max values need to be for those. Uh, functional test, what needs to be done, guided component test, what needs to be done, and additional um, previous repair information is in there as well. So hopefully you got a, a nice overview of what fast track intelligent diagnostics can help you out with when it comes to your diagnostic day. Hopefully it'll speed up your diagnostic workflow. Uh, and with that, that is fast track intelligent diagnostics. And with that, that is our time here today. So uh, make sure you tune in for new diagnostic content every week. We will be premiering a new video every Wednesday at 7 p.m. UK time. So make sure you check it out 
on the YouTube channel. If you're watching, well, of course, you would be watching this on YouTube, but make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, uh, ring the little notification bell so you know anytime we post new content. And it's youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics UK. With that, time for questions. If you have any questions, just feel free. Once again, if you're watching this on a premiere, just leave it in the live chat and we'll answer those. Otherwise, uh, leave a comment under the video and we will get to those uh, as we monitor those comments as well. So I'd like to thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to learning a little bit more about how you might be able to be more efficient at diagnosing vehicles using some of the information that we've given you today. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Hopefully you can watch uh, and see you on any of our other videos. Have a good week, have a good night, and take care.